today's problem is super easy. If you calculate 1 minus 1, the answer is 0. And 1 minus 1 plus 1 is... Uh, it's 1. Now the next problem is... What? What happened? Whoa, what is this? And this place... Where in the world is this? Sundaman, are you okay? Metsin, did you come to save me? Now that I'm here, you can relax. Come on, let's solve this problem together. I don't really get it, but okay. Now about this expression that came up as a problem, it feels kind of strange, doesn't it? Subtract 1 from 1, then add 1 and subtract 1 again, and this repeats infinitely. Wait a second, looking closely, this problem is too easy. Ha, ah, what do you mean? You enclose the first 1 minus 1 in parentheses, and then enclose the next 1 minus 1 in parentheses too. If you keep doing this, the result is 0 plus 0 plus and so on. Which means the answer is 0. That's amazing, Zundamon. But actually, if that reasoning is correct, can't we think of it this way too? First take the first term as it is, then enclose negative 1 plus 1 in parentheses, and then enclose the next negative 1 plus 1 in parentheses too. If you keep doing this, the result is 1 plus 0 plus 0 plus and so on. Which means the answer is 1. Ah, huh? now the result is 1. But earlier it was 0, so... This expression is a very strange one where the value changes depending on how you calculate it. Hold on a second. We can't just leave it at that. Let's properly think about what happened. This problem is related to the value of series or an infinite sum. And the issue lies in the lack of a proper definition. Now, let's suppose we have an infinite sum like this. To calculate its value, first consider the partial sum up to the nth term, which means the value obtained by summing up the terms from a sub 1 to a sub n. When you increase the number of terms in the partial sum, that is when n approaches infinity, and the partial sum gets closer and closer to a value s, then that value s is called the value of the infinite sum. In other words, the value of an infinite sum is the limit of the partial sums. I think I remember something like that, but I had forgotten about it. Now let's go back to the problem. If we calculate the partial sums of this infinite sum, first, the partial sum up to the first term is 1. The partial sum up to the second term is 0. The partial sum up to the third term is 1. The partial sum up to the fourth term is 0. And it continues in this pattern. So as the number of terms increases, the partial sums alternate between 0 and 1, which means the infinite sum oscillates and does not converge. So does that mean there's no answer? Then what are we supposed to do? Saying it oscillates could be one way to answer, but watch out, I have a bad feeling about this. What? Whoa, this, this is... This is the Chizaru mean. Metin, what are you saying? Let me explain. Add up the partial sums from the first up to the nth, and then divide the result by n. In other words, you're taking the average of n partial sums. This is called the Cesaro mean of the partial sums. The Cesaro mean can be applied to general sequences, not just sequences of partial sums, but here we'll focus specifically on the Cesaro mean of partial sums. What good is it to think about the average of partial sums? Well, just watch. The value of an infinite sum is defined as the limit of its partial sums. Now, assuming the partial sums converge to a certain value s, the Cesaro mean also converges to the same value. Huh, really? Why does that happen? A proper proof is difficult, so I'll explain it intuitively here. Take n on the horizontal axis, and plot the values of each partial sum. s sub 1 is here, s sub 2 is here, and so on. Let's assume the partial sums converge here. In other words, this is the value of the infinite sum. Now the Cesaro mean is the average of partial sums. So intuitively speaking, the limit of the Cesaro mean is the average of these infinitely many partial sums. Since we're taking the average of infinitely many terms, the earlier ones can be ignored, and the value matches the limit of the partial sums. That's how it works. Wow, that's how it is. With this, we now know that each of the limits aligns, don't we? The limit of this Cesaro mean is called the Cesaro sum. And even if the partial sums themselves do not converge, the Cesaro sum can sometimes converge. Hmm, really? That's kind of strange. In this sense, the Cesaro sum can be seen as an extension of the value of infinite sums. Alright, let's calculate the Cesaro sum for the expression in the problem. The expression was something like this, right? First, let's extract the terms of the infinite sum. 
it looks like this, with 1 and negative 1 alternating. Next, let's calculate the partial sums. The partial sum up to the first term is 1. The partial sum up to the second term is 0. From there, it alternates between 1 and 0. Now, if we leave it as is, the partial sums oscillate. So let's think about the Cesaro mean of the partial sums. If we call the partial sum up to the nth term the nth partial sum, the average up to the first partial sum is of course 1. The average up to the second partial sum is 1 half. The numerator 1 is the result of adding 1 and 0. The average up to the third partial sum is 2 thirds. The numerator 2 is the result of adding 1, 0 and 1. Continuing similarly it's 2 fourths and then 3 fifths and so on. Well done Zundaman. So the Chizaro sum is the limit of the Chizaro means. But do these Chizaro means converge somewhere? Hmm, it's not obvious at first glance. What if we separate the even-numbered and odd-numbered terms? Hmm. The even-numbered Chizaro mean seems to always be one-half. And the odd-numbered Chizaro mean... I'm not sure yet, so let's extract them first. Extracting the odd-numbered Chizaro means gives us something like this. Using a natural number k, this can be represented as this expression. Now let's transform this. By dividing the numerator and denominator by k, it becomes as follows. If we let k approach infinity, it converges to one half. That looks right. In the end, the odd number terms converge to one half, and the even numbered terms are always one half. So the Tizaru mean converges to one half, and the answer to the problem is this. However, this equal sign means the Chizaro sum of the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. This is such a strange equality. Well, if you just calculate it, the sum alternates between 0 and 1, so it kind of makes sense that taking the midpoint gives us one half as the answer. All right, we've solved the first problem. Cut the first. Let's move on to the next problem. There's more? Here's the second problem. Ah, how thoughtful of you. Ah, huh, this is... It looks similar to the previous problem. Well, I'll just calculate it for now. Just like before, let's extract the terms first. It looks something like this. Now calculating the partial sums. The first partial sum is just 1. The second partial sum is 1 minus 2, which equals negative 1. The third partial sum adds 3, resulting in 2. The fourth partial sum subtracts 4, giving negative 2. And it continues like this. Hmm, it looks like the partial sums still don't converge. But if we calculate the Chizaro sum, we should get an answer. So if we think about the Chizaro mean, the average up to the first partial sum is 1 over 1. The average up to the second partial sum is 0 over 2. The average up to the third partial sum is, uh, 2 thirds. And it continues similarly. Ah, uh, what do we do from here again? It might be a good idea to separate the even-numbered and odd-numbered terms. Oh, right. The even-numbered Chizaro means are zero. And the odd-numbered Chizaro means... Huh? This looks like something we saw earlier. Isn't this supposed to converge to one-half? If that's the case... The odd-numbered Chizaro means approach one-half. And the even-numbered Chizaro means are zero. So the Chizaro means don't converge which means the Cesaro sum can't be calculated? Hmm, it seems you're struggling. But aren't you just one step away? Oh, really? Try taking the Cesaro mean one more time? Take the Cesaro mean again? Does that mean... We calculate the Cesaro mean of the Cesaro mean. That sounds so confusing. No, wait a minute, this... Could it be that it takes the midpoint between zero and one half and converges to one quarter? That's exactly right. A rigorous proof is, let's leave that to the readers. That's something we sometimes see written in math books. And so the answer to the problem is this. However, this equal sign means that the Chizaro sum method was applied twice. To be precise, it means taking the limit of the Chizaro mean of the Chizaro mean. It feels like a very hard one answer though. Anyway, we got an answer. Actually, there's an interesting alternative solution to the problem. This is known as the formula for a geometric series, and it converges when the absolute value of x is less than 1. Now if we substitute x with minus x, we get the following equality. Next, let's assume that x takes values less than 1 and approaches 1. Since the absolute value of x is less than 1, this means approaching the boundary from inside, 
Exactly, that's what it means. Here, let's formally substitute x with 1 on the left-hand side. And as x approaches 1 on the right-hand side, the answer becomes 1 half. Oh, this is the same answer as the Chizaro sum from the first problem. In this way, when we let the variable of the power series approach 1, the resulting value is called the oddball sum. Let's look at another example. Just like before, we'll start with the formula for the sum of a geometric series. This time, let's differentiate both sides first. When we differentiate the left-hand side term by term, the constant term disappears, the first-degree term becomes a constant, and the second-degree term becomes like this. The third-degree term turns into this, and it continues similarly. On the other hand, if we differentiate the right-hand side, I'll skip the explanation but the result is this. Your explanation feels kinda sloppy. By the way, term-by-term -term differentiation doesn't change the radius of convergence. So as long as the absolute value of x is less than 1, this equality holds true. Now if we replace x with minus x, we get this equality. It's the same method as before. Once again, let's assume x takes values less than 1 and approaches 1. On the left-hand side, we formally replace x with 1. While on the right-hand side, we let x approach 1, then the result is 1 fourth. Oh, this is also the same result as the second problem. Good observation. Oh. And if the Chizaro sum converges, it's known that the Abo sum converges to the same value. The Abo sum is so powerful. I thought there was only one way to define the value of an infinite sum, but there are actually so many. There are so many methods, and it's fascinating. Well then, take care everyone. See you again.